But with Major League Baseball returning, the regional sports networks, the Bally sports networks, have filed for bankruptcy. That business has effectively collapsed. And it's happened in four short years. I want to break you through this. So Rupert Murdoch, you'll remember, is like Fox Sports South, Fox Sports Ohio, Fox Sports Midwest. They were all Fox Sports branded programs. And Rupert Murdoch decided to sell for, I believe it was $71 billion, all these different Fox assets to Disney. Now, Fox kept, Rupert Murdoch did Fox News. Uh, He kept uh, FS1, FS2, uh, you know, and they've now bought OutKick. That's happened since. But he sold a lot of sports, uh, sports assets and, and all over entertainment assets as a part of that. $71 billion purchase price. $20 billion of that, roughly, was attributable to the regional sports networks. In other words, Disney, just four years ago, paid $20 billion dollars for the Fox Sports regional sports networks. Then the Department of Justice came out and said, this is an antitrust violation. Disney, because of ESPN and ESPN2 and the SEC network and all those, is not allowed to continue to own the regional sports networks. I think they got it totally wrong, by the way. The government got something wrong. Go figure. I think the Department of Justice got this totally wrong. But they mandated that Disney sell these assets. Immediately, Disney took a loss of $10 billion. That is billion with a B. Because the Diamond Sports Group, which is effectively Sinclair, they initially only paid $10 billion for these assets. Okay? So Rupert Murdoch sells them to Disney for $20 billion. Disney then has to sell them again and only gets $10 billion for them. And now these regional sports networks have gone bankrupt. So you have gone in a very short period of time, basically four years, the cable and satellite bundle has collapsed to such an extent that Rupert Murdoch got $20 billion for an asset that is now in bankruptcy. Disney lost $10 billion, and now the Bally's, uh, the Diamond Sports Group, the Bally's networks, they've been rebranded as Bally's, are now all in bankruptcy. This is one of the great all-time sales uh, decisions in the history of sports because if Rupert Murdoch had held on to these businesses, they were going to continue to pummel and decline in value. He sold them near an apex value, probably like four years before would have been the absolute marketplace peak, but he got out at a very high valuation of $20 billion. They're now worth basically zero. My question for all of you, we need to clip and make sure we share this. Why is the same thing not going to happen to ESPN? I haven't heard a good explanation for why the same thing is not going to happen to ESPN. I think it is. I think ESPN's brand is dead. I think this business is collapsing. I think behind the curtain, they are panicked at Disney over what's going on with ESPN. And when you look at what happened with the regional sports networks, as the cable and satellite bundle collapsed, why would the same thing not happen with a, a, a national sports network like ESPN? They aren't going to be able to pivot to streaming and make anywhere near the same amount of money. And this is, to me, the biggest story in all of sports right now, right? Whether it is Major League Baseball, NHL, or NBA, losing these regional sports dollars as the cable and satellite bundle collapses is a big deal. Not as big of a deal for the NFL because most of their games are still on broadcast network television. Just Monday Night Football on ESPN, which is going to be a mess, and Thursday Night Football on Amazon, which they're already losing money on, are the only ones that you can't watch on ABC, CBS, NBC, whatever, right? Fox. This is going to be a big issue for salaries, for valuations of franchises. They're not going to be able, in my opinion, to remake all of the money that Major League Baseball, the NHL, and the NBA made off of their regional sports networks by any stretch of the imagination going forward. And just look, it's again, it's being wildly undercovered. I don't know if it's because a lot of people in sports media are not smart enough to understand it. 
I don't know if they're afraid of alienating people by talking about it. I don't know if they're buying into the lies that ESPN is spreading of, oh, don't worry, we're just going to go direct to consumer. Yeah, but when you go direct to consumer, you're actually selling to the people who watch your product and you're going to have to charge them orders of magnitude, triple or quadruple per month in order to try to make the money back. And it's going to be very seasonal, right? Because let's say you're a huge football fan. You'll sign up for a streaming service in September, October, November, December. But by January, you're getting a lot less games and you're not going to pay for eight months. And let's say you're a big Major League Baseball fan or whatever it is, you'll only pay for the season. And unlike your cable and satellite subscription, which is actually really hard to cancel or flip back on because of all the wires into your house, It's really easy to start and stop a streaming subscription. And they're seeing this already outside of sports. A lot of people say, okay, I'll sign up for Netflix and catch up on everything I want to watch, then I'll cancel. Or I'll sign up for Disney+, Plus, watch everything I want, Paramount, whatever it is, and they'll abandon going forward. This is a big story. And I don't think enough people are talking about it. Um, But sports as we know it, from $20 billion in regional sports valuation just four years ago to now effectively zero. Why is that not going to happen for ESPN? I think it is. And I've been talking about it coming for years. This regional sports network collapse is a big sign of that. 